Here we are again. Hi everyone. So I might keep the math portion a bit short today because I'm kind of tired. Um, share again. Oh god, it's a parabola. Oh, oh no. Uh. Oh, holy crap. Okay, sorry. I'm actually spoiled. So, the Sheridan 2021 problem is really good. Um, and I've seen the problem before because it was submitted for a USA TST at some point, I think. Um... Yeah, so I, I know a bit about how the solution to that goes already because I it was considered for USA TST. Request. Yeah, I'll s maybe I can still do it. I don't know. Maybe I don't remember very much of how the solution goes. I'll put I'll put it up, but I am I'm slightly spoiled. Uh, no music. Oh, hang on. <sighs> you think that? There we go. Music. Oh frick! I didn't mean to do that. So today we will probably finish playing Evans Remains. I think there's not that much left. And... Uh... I don't know. We'll see how long the mass that portion goes. Is 2019 and 6. The Eddie sequence, yeah, no, that we've. That one was on uh, some op test, I forget exactly what. How do you type so fast? I don't actually type that quickly. I, I have a Devora keyboard, so it's. you know. And I, I'm, I'm good at touch typing, I guess. I didn't do anything special beyond those two things. Uh.
Okay, what are the other requests? Parabola. Yeah, the shotgun problem is good. I I do remember I do know a little bit about it because I remember this. I don't remember very much because it was proposed a long time ago for USDST, but it was. I remember the solution's not short. That's basically all. Do I need to provide ex instructions on how to use channel points? Uh, anyways, let me... Korea final 2016 6. Uh, okay, never mind. This is a text. Uh, we'll, we'll write textbook from 191895 as the It's one of those days where it's just a ton of requests. Okay, so I got Ibero, I got Korea, I got the top three. Brazil 2013-2 is next. Oh my god. Also, whoever types at Ibero 2016-6 needs to learn that there is a dots command. Like, on AOPS, it's like three manual C dot commands. Like, individually. Ugh. Can you request open problems? I would prefer you don't. I mean... Like, oh my god. That's so bad. What's wrong with Usman 24 to 2004 6? Uh, Usman 1974. Oh, the clip. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm still getting there. Almost 2003. Oh my god. There's so many problems today.
Okay. Alright, so I don't think I can fit them all, but th this is where we're... <laughs> this is where we're at. These are the eight properly submitted requests. Um... Why do I put IMO 1006 as an algebra problem? Uh, which one is this? Oh. Because the solution that isn't a geo interpretation is, uh, like, mostly manipulation. Like, there's not much NT content. Oh, okay, there's one. Oh my god. What is this? All right. I don't I don't know how I can fit it. Uh, here, we're going to we're going to reorder things slightly. <laughs> Okay, no more requests. That's it. That's it. The NTE requested got rejected because you didn't follow the procedure. You're supposed to click the thing that says problem request. Uh, I can also play the fun here in Egno before problem section. Oh, I think what happened is there is a chapter that's about on like configurations and uh, I didn't want to spoil which configuration corresponded to which problem. Yeah, 2019 N6, I mean, anything from like a recent shortlist I've probably seen because I um, put it on a mop test probably. I basically have to look at the whole shortlist to decide what problems go on mop test, so anything that's on shortlist I've probably seen. Yeah. Alright. That's about as large as the poll will go. Alright, we'll be right back.
Oh, frick. Uh, I forgot to unmute myself. I'm sorry. Um, so the ones that are on the potential to-do list are some sets, Brazil, uh, Korea, Parabola, and Sherigan. Those, those are the five that are still possible. Um, but I'm probably not going to get all five though unless I get really lucky today. Uh, yeah, re antichamber. I was saying that, uh... Oh no. It's, it's one of those things? Are you serious? That's horrible. Now, now that I see the name, like, Plunek Rusa, I know I'm not going to solve it. <laughs> Because I'm so bad at this kind of stuff. Anyways, all I was saying about Antichamber is that um, sometime when I'm not as busy, I might just pick a Sunday night and just play a bunch of video games on stream. Because I haven't had... I have all these games and I don't have the time... I, I don't play them unless I like, block out time for them. Uh, so... Evan, you took a course on additive combo. That was the class where I was like trying to drop the class, except I couldn't because I had like a minimal number of credits, so I was barely scraping by. Um. Yeah, I I after I think the thing I learned from taking an additive combo class is that I'm never going into additive combo like ever. I'm so bad at it. Oh, okay, how am I supposed to construct this? Uh. Yeah, I, I basically understood nothing in the additive combo class after like the first three weeks. It's just like... <laughs> I've never doing that area of math ever again. Okay, I'll come back, so... Here we are. Uh... Dun dun dun. What am I even supposed to do? <sighs> I mean, the constants seem like they don't really matter. Um, it's just you want the different set to be a lot bigger than the sum set. I, I mean, I agree it's cool. I don't think I'm going to... I'm not sure I'm going to solve it. Like... Yeah, I, I, uh... Yeah, I'm sorry, I really don't want to do this problem. Uh... 
I, I just hate this field of death. I was gonna try a different problem first, and if we have time, depending on how things go, I might come back to it. But honestly, I probably won't, because I hate additive combinatorics. Sorry! Okay. Why Brazil? Uh. It looked like it would be easy, or I don't know. Like, I, I'm trying to hedge my bets on like which problems I can do quickly, because if I do a long problem and it takes forever, then we don't get to do any easy problems. So I'm like basically trying to guess which problems I might be able to get like in a reasonable amount of time to maximize the number of problems off. Um, it's unclear if I'm, I, I'm not always right about this, but um, yeah. Hi Space Sam, welcome back. Alright, welcome back everyone. So today we have a problem from Brazil 2013 and it goes so there's a fixed set of positive integers a and Arnaldo picks like a hidden number little a and then Bernardo has to pick any integer b and fit, get the number of divisors of a times b and you would like to show that you can figure out the number chosen. So I think there's a number three flavor that won't be too important. Uh, thank you, Space Sam, for the sub. Four months. And you kind of only look, care about the, like, the prime, the exponents. So... So what we're going to do is suppose, like, A equals... So, in maximal generality, it's going to look like A equals E1 to the P1 PK to the... Hmm, let me think. So, what what if I draw A as a table where um, there's some number of primes, and then each row of the table I have like uh, like some exponents. So maybe I have one, two. F let me let me just draw up like five primes for concreteness. Uh, zero, one, four, zero. Or something like this. So yeah, you have this thing, and I want to pick a little b, such that the number of factors I can tell the numbers apart. Okay. Um. I wonder if it's possible to just pick the factors of b to be enormous. It feels like that should leave enough to just multiply all the primes up to the largest element of A. Wait, if I take the product of all the primes? I don't think that works. Does it? Oh, wait, no, it... No, you get you don't get a b. You get like the number of factors, right? So like, if the thing was like one zero zero zero, let me put it zero and then zero zero. If you try to take b equals p one p two p three p four p five, it does not work. So I don't think that's what you want. But my thought was I'm going to like take let b be equal let n be huge and let like 
b equals like p1 to the n, let's see, p2 to the n squared, p3 to the n cubed, p4 to the n to the 4, p5 to the n to the 5. And what happens is if n is sufficiently large, um, if, if I take n to be a huge, sufficiently large, then when you do the multiplication, um, a times b will be equal to p1 times n plus e1, p2 times n squared plus e2, p3 times nq plus e3. I, actually, hang on. I don't want to do 1, 2, 4, 5, actually. I want to do 1, 2, 4, 8, 16. I think that would, I need to go even faster. n to the 8 plus e4, p5 times n to the 16 plus e5. I think that will work. Because the reason is when I, so, you know, I suppose a is p1 to the e1, p5 to the e5. When I expand this, the number of factors is like, n plus e1 plus 1, n plus e2 plus 1, n plus e3 plus 1, n to the 4 plus e4 plus 1. Oh, I'm, I'm bad at typing. Okay, I think this will work now. Because when I expand this, if n is big enough, then there's no regrouping. So by looking in base n, you can recover whatever products went into it, right? So for example, then uh, if n is huge, uh, working in base n, look at the coefficient of n to the 23, I guess. And then it'll work. This is a computer science trick? Well, <laughs> there you go. Uh, yeah, so this will work now because now you can just recover all the exponents and it's fine. Yeah, you can store three position values in one number. Thank you, Paul Gibbs, for the follow. Okay, so I think this just works now, right? Because, because n is so big, um, Can you tell us a bit of motivation? I think I wanted the base idea. You, you kind of saw I started with like n squared, n cubed, n fourth, n to the fifth, and then I decided to make it bigger. So, sorry, I, I think the p5 is actually distracting. Let me just do four primes. Um, for if I have four primes, um, and let me get rid of the plus ones because that's actually distracting. Uh, so we'll, we'll do it minus one, although it doesn't obviously it doesn't really matter. So uh, then, uh, 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 so the point is, what I do is I pick a parameter n which is like really big, like larger than say like the factor, like the the n be huge, e.g. n greater than like 10 to the 10 to the a plus 100 or something like that. So something that's very big in terms of the elements in a. And what happened when you do that, what happens is when you expand, this n is really large. It's so large, uh, or not 23, but it's so large that you don't get any regrouping. So you can figure out what the coefficients look like. So n is like... In fact, I'll, I'll even do n equals 10 to the 100 because it's easier to think about if you think n is a power of 10. Like the product of... number of divisors. It's so like the coefficient of capital N is e2, e3, e4, n plus like the capital coefficient of n squared is e1, e3, e4, and so on. The largest possible one is n to the 15. The n to the 14 one is just e1. 
And the point is like, even though officially you only have this number, because n is so large, all you have to do is read off freaking. Did I miss a... Uh... <sighs> Double subscript. Because n is so large, you can read off what all the coefficients are by taking n in very, very large. Okay, but that'll work. Yeah. You made n- yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think n just has to be bigger than like... You, you need to be big enough so there's no regrouping and all the coefficients are products of EIs. So it just has to be larger than like the product of the x. So yeah, n equals 10 to the max a probably works. Probably something a lot smaller works. Oh crap. Max a. Yeah, n just has to be bigger than the product. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I wrote it that way because when I was writing it, I hadn't done the rest of the calculation yet, so I didn't know how big I wanted n to be, I just know I wanted it to be big. So I just put it on run that thing, and then you know, once I reach this and actually write out what this calculation is, then I see, okay, yeah, you can probably do less. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, you don't even need to solve the system because, like, four of the coefficients will just be the singleton, right? Like, you actually get every... Oh, oh, I forgot you when you two, three, four. Yeah, but you, you don't even need to say, like, for example, if you want the value of E3, you look at the coefficient of N to the 11. Uh, no, the, the, the four is just for, the four is just for demonstration purposes. Like, it's easier for me to write out this example. Um, you would do the same in general with K. Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the 4 is just for concreteness. You can change 4 to K if you want. Why would you look at N to the 11? Because when you look at this, what's the coefficient of N to the 11, for example? It's exactly E3. So my point is you can recover each individual EI by looking at one of... The, the equations are like... Yeah. Uh, E3, right? Not E2. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. So so N... Okay. You know, I'll just write the correct thing. N strictly greater than product of max VP... A across yeah but the point is I you know you want to I, I'm allowed to the problem is telling you you can pick these numbers and my idea is I want to pick them big enough there's no regrouping like you don't want them to be the itty bitty numbers you want them to be huge numbers so that you can read off more information than yeah In computer graphics, we store a 3D... <laughs> oh man, that's... That's funny. Okay, see, this is why you did, I picked the Brazil problem, because... I mean, honestly, the problem statement just kind of looked like it should be... quick. I don't know. All right, so what else did we see we had on the table? I don't know if the Korea is easier or the... You know, let, let's try the Parabola Geo. Yeah, I think this is a good free problem, for sure. You have the parameters, so choose them.
anti I wouldn't call this anti-construct to be honest. And the reason is I don't feel like I did very- I don't think it's very number theoretic. Like, I think the number theory is just there as flavor text for the most part for this problem. Wow, oh, I don't know. Depending on who you ask, I mean, you can classify as a lot of things. I personally just- I just don't feel like I use many properties of integers. I'll, I'll put it that way. And, um... I would probably just call it algebra. Yeah, exactly. Like you basically, it's basically a tuple of integers is the way you think about it. You don't use any properties of the actual primes other than like they exist so you can, they are finite tuples. Okay, let's do Parabola Geo. This is gonna be so strange. I, I don't know the last time I saw ROM like this. Okay, welcome back everyone. So today, David Atosiotz is telling me to do this problem. And <laughs> it's a Geo problem, but I'm going to not be using GeoGebra for obvious reasons. So there's a parabola with focus F. I'm not sure I remember what the definition of parabola is, but at least I know what it looks like. So here we go. Um, dun, 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 parabola. Here's the focus. And so, yeah, I'm. Unless I might want the. So, the definition of parabola is that I have a line L and a point F, and it's the locus of all points such that this guy is equal to that guy. That's what it means. Okay, so now what I do is I have two points A and B. Uh, so I, I guess I pick a point A, a point B, and there's a tangent here, and a tangent here, and they meet at P. What does it even mean to be tangent to a parabola? I don't actually know. <laughs> How do I interpret that geometrically? I don't know. Uh Okay, so O is the circumcenter of P A B and I wanna show P F is perpendicular to P O. O looks like it's here, so this picture is definitely wrong. Uh that's not good. P F is perpendicular to F O. Wait, I'm really confused. If I pick A and B to be symmetric points, doesn't... Aren't POF collinear just by symmetry? Like, if I picked, like, A here and B here, and I did that... O is somewhere on this line, right? So how is PF perpendicular to FO? Did I... did I misread the problem? Help, what's going on? Oh, seriously? O is equal to F? Seriously? No, I don't believe you. How? What? Oh no.
Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm kind of just drawing O's. Oh, it's actually equal to the focus? That's so weird. Okay. Well, I don't know. So I need to figure out exactly what it means to be tangent to a parabola, because I don't actually really know. Um, also, maybe you should just get a better picture. This picture kind of sucks. All of my pictures make it look like POF should be collinear, and it's not true. What does pretend OSU has something? I don't know. Derivative. I mean, I can, so I can just let y equals x squared over c times x squared, I agree, but that seems sacrilegious. Uh... So what what does it mean to be tangent to a parabola geometrically? Like my Do you recommend learning parabolas for IMO? Not really. Oh right, HMMT is happening now. I forgot about that. Well, that's that's fun. I also all the way over. I don't know. Okay, my diagram just sucks because my my parabola is probably not really a truly a parabola. Uh. Yeah, I forgot. It, oh, Harvard MIT math tournament is happening now. O should equal F. Uh, yeah. Here, it's a random meta picture. Why don't we try GeoGebra? Okay, fine. Let's use GeoGebra. How do I draw a parabola in GeoGebra? I don't actually know. Parabola. Uh, that seems, okay, whatever. Ta-da! Parabola! Oops. Okay, so point A, B. Just do a... Like, I know I can bash it by just taking... Yeah. Like taking y equals x squared, but I feel like I, I don't know. Also, it should be f, not o. Okay, o equals triangle center, p, a, b, three. Okay. Yeah, right angle. 
record yeah so and close midpoint AB oh lord how did that happen why are the points turn blue red I screwed up We let X and Y be the feet from A and B, then PX equals PY. AB and OF are parallel. Really? No, I don't think so. Uh, I see. Drop the feeds from O. Okay. Uh, so X is midpoint PA, PB. What am I doing? I don't know. Drop the feet from A to- Oh! Oh! Oh, sorry, I misunderstood what was going on. Okay, uh... K equals... Okay, that seems strong. OAFB might be cyclic. OAFB. Yeah, it looks like it. What the heck is going on? Uh. Wait, okay, so why is any of this true? What just happened? Uh. What the heck is this? Yeah, yeah, I know I can Cartesian flash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so KAF is isosceles and AX is the angle bisector. I see. Okay, that's how you encode the parabola. Okay, that's fine. So, so K equals, we have K, K equals KF. And AP is angle bisector because of the tangency condition, I think. Yeah, so hence PX equals PY, yeah, PK equals PY equals PY. follow. I think L is the reflection of F. Yeah. 
Okay, so I should draw in the relevant segments. Oh, AK equals I'm at AK. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Smiler, for the follow. I'm to erase OXY. Yeah. Well, I mean, I probably should keep O because it's the problem. But. So AOFB cyclic then probably comes out of an angle chase, right? Or something like that? Uh. Let me. Let me is, is that right? Because this angle. These guys are perpendicular, so. Yeah, AOFP cyclic should probably come out of an angle chase, I think. Oh, K equals AF. Or, sorry, yes, K equals KF. Are the two cars spiral sim? <laughs> yeah. But I think I can prove AOFP cyclic now. Because AOFP cyclic, um. Angle AOB is equal to twice the angle APB. And APB. Maybe if I give these names, let's say I'll call this angle, let me call this, okay, let's call this angle alpha. And let's call this angle beta. So if I call them alpha and beta. The ang twice angle APB is like. You can do this. Alpha plus beta, right? Or. Is alpha plus beta? Uh, one way to double check. Yep. So that's angle A O B. Meanwhile, A F B um, is also two alpha plus beta. It's like I rotate through. Yeah. So that will get the A O F B cyclic. Okay, so great. Now, where am I tr trying to get the right angle from? So... Okay, so the right angle will then be equivalent to PF being an internal angle bisector of AFB, because then O is like... Uh, the other arc midpoint or something. So PF should bisect... A, F, B. Polar, right? Hmm, is that a polar statement? It should be. No, it, it should be equivalent to the problem because of the cyclic. Like, angle bisector AFB definitely coincides with, like, the line that P there. I just don't see how to prove it.
Should I redeem 180 second ad break? Oh my god. <laughs> KLO equals KLF. Carefully. Oh, I see. You want that to be tension. You want like O to be tension. Eh. Maybe. But here's the thing. Um, I should know this fact. Hang on. There's a, there's the same fact that when you have an ellipse, you have a pair of isogonal angles, right? Uh, AF and BF pass through the second effect kill on hyperbola. Wait, what? No, I don't. I don't think so. No, it, it's a miss. I think. Yeah, like there's a there's a nice little conjugate thing, and I guess when it's an ellipse. It should be... So am I right that line PF is not going to intersect the... No, hang on. No, that's a slightly different property. Um, how does this go? Yeah, there's a property... This is a property of an ellipse, and I'm trying to remember... <sighs> Why does T- yeah, I don't know about that problem either. Um, I'm trying to remember what property- how you prove that property. It's some... Yeah, yeah, hang on. Alright, let, let me find this. It's 13 plus. All right. PM EST. Thirteen plus. <laughs> All right, so yeah. Um, how do you prove the property of ellipses, though? I also can't. I thought I posted it in my blog, but I can't find it. But it's yeah. This is true just in general. If you have an ellipse and you take two tangents, then you get like an angle bisection. But I don't remember how you prove it. Uh. The statement uh here. Let, let me let me see if I can find this statement. Hello, thank you, Doctor Howe, for the follow. F is midpoint simidian chord. Is it? Yeah, 
Yeah, man, I saw I saw these damn blanking on ROM TST. E. Okay, I I think I have the reference. Okay, and here is another reference. This is from Cut the Knot. Oh crap. Oh come on. A uh, billard thing, I, I guess maybe. Yeah, it's this really tricky synthetic thing where, um, I'll, let me copy that image from Cut the Knot. Let me hide these two. Yeah, so this is a property of ellipses that I was referring to. Like when you have an ellipse, the focus, the tangents, you get bisections like this. Um, and there's there's a synthetic proof on cut the nut, but it's a little involved. It requires you to like do some reflection. But anyways, because you can treat the parabola as a ellipse with one focus at infinity, um, it will imply that the same bisection here is going to happen. It's like p there's a bisect. Uh, FP by sex thing, and the proof will end up being, I think, uh, along those lines. Oh, uh, you can't see the original statement. I thought people might remember it by now. <laughs> I'll, I'll shrink the cut the knot picture some more then. Uh, more. The fact that I'm talking. Is that the two angles from my tangents of broken of your lips are equal angles? Yeah, yeah, this is the one I'm also pasting here. I'll, I'll try to format this so that you can see both parts. But that will do it. Once you know that fact, it will. Okay, do I have to prove the infinite ellipse stuff? I mean, I imagine what you can do is you can take the proof, the proof of the statement for the ellipse and then like, uh, work it so that it's, uh, try to translate it into a proof of, for the parabola. I haven't actually thought about exactly how you do this, but, um, Yeah, did I miss something? Um, I 
You use PM parallel to AK. Uh oh. And this wait, that turns the problem into useful doesn't A2? Seriously? Is there a reason why PM is parallel? Is that obvious? PM intersect AF. Oh, this is crazy. Oh, well, that's some crazy stuff here. So this one... Oh, okay, yeah, perpendicular bisector. Yeah, okay, so perpendicular bisector of KL. And now... You smooth as an A2, huh? So the claim is that this point is on the perpendicular by ah right this point is on the perpendicular bisector because <sighs> yeah so this is on the perpendicular bisector because what um this angle is equal to that angle I guess yeah right okay so the what the heck. Yeah, yeah, I know. So the like the angles are equal. Okay, wow. So this is actually Yusuf Motu. <laughs> Guys, I think we now have the best solution to Yusuf Motu as an A2. A Yusuf Motu as an A2 applied to um. That's nuts. No, actually, sorry, this is actually a more specific version, right? Because it's a. Uh, no, it's not. What? How many degrees of freedom were there? There were three, right? Yeah. Uh. Like the hum, Humpty. Why are we solving? No, no, we're quoting Yusuf 2008 here, or uh, equivalently, we're using this thing to solve Yusuf 2008 You can take your pick. <laughs> uh, so, okay, let's see. If I wanted to solve Yusuf 2008 with this method, um, you would say, uh, What would you say? This is on the ink, but so this angle is equal to this angle, so you can draw this parallel line. You can draw this parallel line. And you can draw a parabola with focus F. Or something. And I'm, I'm not sure how this. Is, would it be easy to translate this to a proof these cell A problem? So you'd be given this point F that's on this, this, with this angle, and that, and the other angle. Um, Hmm. 
So it's like reflect F across these two things. And yeah, reflect, reflect. I think you, yeah, I think we can, yeah, I think we can change it into like a very, quote, a very similar, yeah. If I do the two reflections, then we have two perpendiculars. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, how about so if if I start with this like this angle is equal to this angle, the alpha is here. Um how would I translate that to showing that there is a parabola that I can draw? Circles have line of infinity for directrix? I guess so. APM Yeah, I'm both on Monday. Alright, I want to think if I can... Well, actually, if someone wants to try to do it, like, you try to quote this problem and as a way to eat the Yusma doesn't eat problem, that'd be pretty funny. Um, I think it's... I mean, in principle, it should be... Doable, I think, because we have this proof here. But I'm struggling a little to see exactly how the details would work out. It's okay, actually. Yeah, reflect. Oh, yeah, I see it. Okay, so the way you do it is you reflect F, 
and then so you get these two things are equal equal you have this angle 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 so they will tell you that these three lines when i reflect f to k and all the lines a k m p b l are parallel however because p l is equal to p k the middle one is perpendicular to k l so now all three of them are perpendicular and so now you can draw a parabola you quote the the parabola has focus f and you quote the result um to say that like I, o angle O of P is a right angle, which means that, uh, does that eat the Yuzumo problem or are they asking for different things? I don't actually know if that helps too much. Uh, oh no, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that eats the Yusumo problem. So the thing that's being asked is the Yusumo problem. Uh, PF, yeah, awesome. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. Okay, so at this point we're just memeing, but I <laughs> this would be really fun. Uh, okay, so let's rename K. I actually don't need X and Y at all. Delete X. Y. Let's rename K to X and it all to Y. Uh, and now we need to change the in main. Oh crap. B to C. I don't need the circle. I don't need that circle either. Okay, so we're going to USMO. Did I not take 2008 USMO? Uh, what do you think? <laughs> do we have the textbook? Does, does someone know like which textbook it appeared in so I can quote it in the post? Well, let's get to that. Okay, so reflect F over AB and AC to obtain points X and Y. J math man DL tis is David not oh man I have to try to figure out <sighs> to obtain point X and Y and then B A X E L S B F C F C Y. Uh, 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 uh. I the problem condition uh, directed angle P A B is equal to direct angle F B A is equal to directed angle X B A. So B X parallel P A. Similarly, CY P 
for px. Uh, a, so okay, so xy is perpendicular to p a. So therefore, we may draw a parabola through b and c, tangent to a b and a c, with directrix coincide. And directrix coincides with the point with the line xy. On the other hand, the following result showed up in Okay, and then we need to get the Export graphics view as asymptote, generate code, copy, use the simplifier. Did I zoom out that much? I have no idea. By David Altizio. Okay, maybe I should not be a total troll, uh, but. Eighteen ninety five, right? Oops. No! Ah! Measured angle. Measured angle. <laughs> wow. That's tricky. What is the asymptote error? I comment this out, does it compile? No. Uh, what's the error? This is a, it's also useless as an error message. It's just like it doesn't tell you anything, like at all. Oh, I think it's a line. Okay, I think I know what's wrong. Uh, so let's go back here. I need to... The lines are going to mess it up. I'm going to hide these three guys. Hide line X, Y. And we'll draw A, B in red. Using A, C. It's like the segment X, Y. Alright, so... These guys can be... Red. This guy can be orange. Okay, let's try that again. Export as asymptote. 
generate code, copy to clipboard, push through the processor. Okay, it worked, except the graph is way too, um, it's way too big. And that line width is... Okay, uh, let's polish this a little bit. I want angle here. This is such a silly use of stream time. Uh, okay, so let's see. The point C should be uh, 315. The point B should be 225. Five X. Oh, I actually forgot to drop BC. Uh Oh crap. Oh, I forgot to draw BC! No! No! You know, it's fine. We'll just not have my BC. Okay. Ta-da! <laughs> Alright, I probably had a bit too much fun with that. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh... How long did that take me to... <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Alright, let's go back to serious business. Aren't A and B on the parabola? Uh... B and C are. So, so, so the point is that the, the in the problem it's like A and B are on, but here B and C are. So it's, there's a change of name. You know, I'll, I'm gonna... I'm going to change the things in here.
Alright, someone else can deal with the moderation there. Did someone submit a problem request? <laughs> I guess I've been goofing off for the last bit of time, so maybe I should consider it. What's that FE though? <laughs> Do, do you guys have interest in the FE? Let's do Korea. I will, I will attempt the Korea problem, although... Honestly, what the heck. But also, okay, fine. It's graph theory. This will probably need a board, right? Because it's graph theory. Do I need to lock the thread or something? Is it getting out of control already? <sighs> okay, duh. I guess this is my fault, so I should clean it up. Okay, back to work. Okay, so what is going on? Alright, the YouTube intro. Oh, shout out to Hi Evan from Anne Wenchu from a few minutes back. I think I'm not doing the what's up today. And shout out to K2 from AOPS user 305. Okay, welcome back everyone. So, uh, today we have a problem from Korea 2020. Uh, finals, the Korean final round of uh, problem 2. And so in this problem, there's... I don't know what's going on. There's 2020 pairs. So this is a group, I guess. Let's put like the boys here and the girls here. Okay, and so on. And... So it's a bipartite graph where these things are promised to have edge weight 1. So I guess they can shake hands mo like more than once. And... So you have, you have a thing that looks like this. And then also, between any two things, at least one of the edges is here. So like, edge like that. Equals one or less than or equal to one. Uh, then shake hands tomorrow. Oh, sorry, there's no edge weights. I'm silly. Never mind. 
Uh, basically, you, you so I have these 2020 predetermined special edges, and then for any two of the special edges, um, there is at least a uh, there's at least some other edge. So a picture looks like this, and then maybe like there should be another pair here or something. Uh, I see nothing on this whiteboard. Really? Okay. And what I want to do is prove that there is at least... Uh, I, I want to get a 4038 cycle. Okay. Okay, this, okay, so now that all the garbage conditions are out of the way, this actually feels a little bit better. So it's like I have a bipartite graph and then I have a... I have something that looks like this. Okay, that's fine. So, why don't I just start by taking a maximal cycle and seeing what I can say. Actually, I'm trying to think if... Why? So... Twenty nineteen cycle. Wait, is this graph directed? I was just treating as a bipartite graph. So you can have uh, examples of things for which you can't get everyone in the cycle. So if I have this picture, this is with 2020 replaced by Ford. Um, there's an example I can draw that has... Uh, red, 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 red. And you can have like something like that. And I don't know, say like that. Or whatever. So it, I don't really care about the top. The point is like only this one has things out of it. And if you do that, then there's no full cycle. So, um, are you saying, so I'm getting a suggestion that we can contract this, like rather than view this as a 4040 vertex graph, I take every special edge and I, I can, I can turn it into a directed graph by saying, um, new. There's a tournament, right? Okay, I, I understand. So there's I treat this as 2020. I, I rather than 4040, I treat it this way. And then for every the edges are either but we'll say like uh that's always point from boy to girl, just go alphabetically, whatever. And then it looks like this, and then like that or something. So now what we have is a tournament actually. That's a, that's a lot better. We have a tournament. So, there's a tournament on 2020 vertices, and I guess Twitch chat is ahead of me. Um, what is the cycle condition? Sound condition of such reader. It's is it a wobbly cycle? Is that what it is? No, it's not.
Right, because is is it true that I can like flip the? I, wait, now now I'm confused too. <laughs> what is the condition? So it's it's not a cycle would be sufficient, but it's it's weirder. Uh, how does this work? Well, the reason I'm confused, I'm trying to wrap my head around what a, what a cycle looks like. Um, so, like, I, you can reduce this to the tournament and you want to do something. Uh, it's like boy one, girl two, boy three. What is going on? Let me look at this example here. I drew it boy, girl, boy. Girl. So if I look at this example, with just these three things, and I need to add one more edge to make this true. So... Um, oh, let's... Yeah, this is very weird. It's like... The cycle. So here's an example showing that like, oh, this is an isolated. This is isolated. So like a source and a sink or something like that. I agree they alternate boy and girl. The problem is they don't necessarily alternate boy girl and like like in this example here. This is this is actually an n equals three example. Um, let me let me move this up to make it look like that. Um, the correct cycle here is like boy one, girl two, boy three, girl three. Which if I drew, if I draw this in the tournament style, one, two, three, it's kind of strange. Um, <laughs> one, one goes to two, three goes to two, one goes to three. So this is, I mean, the, the path that's being followed is strange. I'll, I'll just put it that way. I see. But the point is that we don't need to all the strangeness. I agree. So what happens is in any tournament, it is always the case that either you have a Hamiltonian cycle, um, yeah, yeah. 
So, in any tournament, either there's a Hamiltonian cycle, or yeah, I guess I guess it just is a Hamiltonian path. So actually, I'll I'll tell you this general structure. the The way that I think of it is the the most general thing you can say about a tournament is that you order. Um, you can do something like this, and then inside of each, there's a Hamiltonian cycle, and then some other stuff. This is the most general thing you can say. Okay, so if I have the Hamiltonian path, is that good enough? Does that go through enough things? Uh, what does it mean to be a Hamiltonian path? Oh, okay. Oh, oh shoot, you actually need exactly, it's not asking for at least 4038, it's, um, exactly 4038. Oh crap. <laughs> uh... Well, crap. Okay, so wait, which things would be enough? If I had a cycle through 2019, that's good enough, right? If you have a true cycle, like a genuine Hamiltonian cycle with 2019 things, uh, that would work. So sufficient includes a full 2019 cycle as well as a 2020 what, what's the condition you want at the end it's like a hamiltonian path with source to sync would also work Yeah, so I think the Twitch Lemma does apply here. Because if there's no 2019 cycle, then there's no triangles. <laughs> yeah, Twitch Lemma! <laughs> this is amazing. <laughs> Eat the problem! <laughs> Did we do it the right way? I think we might have done it the wrong way. If there's no... Wait, I think we used the wrong way. Uh, hang on, so what's the thing? Um, I put it, uh, well, I guess my head's blocking it. Uh, I think I, I think we did it the wrong way. I don't think it works the way I want to do it. Uh, If there's no 2019 cycles, there's no 2020 cycles, is what it implies, I think. But wait, this is a... Hang on, I'm confused. Uh... So 
So 2020 cycle implies 20, 20, 2019 cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, contrapositive. Uh, oh, no, wait, wait, you're fine. Oh, wait, hang on. Yeah, okay, so a uh, Hamiltonian path that doesn't complete to a cycle is what we want. Yeah, yeah. There we go. That, now it works. Now it works, yeah. So H path that isn't, that doesn't fin complete. So if I have a path and then the last one goes like that, then it's okay. You don't need to be a full source, I think. So. Yeah. Uh, what's the proof of the Twitch limit? I guess I have to show you the proof of the Twitch limit again. There, there is no obvious proof. I will give you that. It seems like if it's true, it should be easy to prove, and it's not. <laughs> but uh, the proof looks like this is the proof. What you do is you take a maximum, so we'll prove that if there's no cycles of length n, so if, we'll see the, show that if there's an n plus one cycle, there's an n cycle. And what you do is you take a maximal proper cycle. And if there's more than n minus one, then you can classify them in, um, then in your maximal cycle, everything's either above it or below it. And so you get a picture that looks like this, but in this picture, you can't have a Hamiltonian cycle. Is Twitch Lemon one of the Otis handouts? I actually don't remember. No, it was not supposed to be a TST submission. Uh, it was USA TST 2008 used the lemma. And that's how I heard about it. And I wanted to use it on a mob practice test as like, uh, you know, just a like a practice test problem. Uh, but then I needed it for a problem on stream. So I was just like, okay guys, uh, happy new year. This lemma is true. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's that's the backstory. Um, yeah, I, I really wanted to put it on the red test problem because I, I'm just imagining like, you know, you could come to MOP and on the first test you get a result that's like this, you'll never forget it. Uh, but uh, my plan was foiled. But, you yeah. know. Is the Twitch lemma quotable? I would not quote it. <laughs> I don't think many people know it's true. <laughs> Uh, 2009. Okay, cool. 2009. Yeah, th this this pr this proof is really good. I was so surprised when I learned this was true. It was just like no one told me. <laughs> All right. Well, we got to use it again. Have you done 2ST 2010 9? Is that the inequality? Oh no, it's the 3K choose K. Yeah, I've done that one. Wow. So. Oh man, that's so funny. Yeah, it was a 2020 cycle, it's a 2019 cycle, so now you're fine. <laughs> Alright, cool. That, that was... Oh, sorry, I also missed something not important. Uh, shout out to- it would be preferred if you would say Here's a shout out to my boyfriend Kent Zhu, end quote from Paul Gayops. Uh yeah. Site Twitch Lemma and Yevon is the greater. <laughs> oh man. Alright.
hören. Okay, uh, so that's fine. I guess today is just kind of a meme day, huh? <laughs> so first there's a parabola, and then there's a Twitch lemma. Re <laughs> Twitch lemma reincarnate. So from Black Blue Car, uh, shout out to my girlfriend who lives in Canada and is real. I promise. <laughs> All right. <sighs> Her name is Alberta, she lives in Vancouver, or something like that. Or her name is Vancouver, and she lives in Alberta. Uh. <laughs> Alright. Oh, so that, that, that happened. I feel like if I was trying to be educational, I would spend a bit more time solving math problems. But I'm pretty tired. <laughs> Bobby Bob. <laughs> Alright, we're finishing Evans Remains. So, uh, no, this one, no wait, that's the, this one, there we are, I'm good at this over, I think. So strongly connect, yes, strongly connected components always have Hamiltonian cycles. Okay, welcome back to Evans Remains. Why do we have math so early these days? Uh, mostly because I've been pretty tired. Yeah. Alright. 
Okay. So, for people who weren't here last time, um... Uh, what's the plot summary? So this is a girl named Isis who's looking for a guy named Evan, who is missing. Uh, who knows where he is. And Dysus runs into this guy who is looking for immortality on this island that apparently no one knows about. And the guy... I forget what his name is. But uh, the guy on the island, sister, is named Dysus. Also, there's a bunch of flashbacks that don't make that so far don't really make sense to me. But we're gonna find out what's happening. That guy's awesome. Yeah, the guy's name is Clover. Day after day. I don't know why you brought us here. Me neither. If not, you know. All right. Let's see. So what's the plan? So there is a. Okay, that is a power thing. Not that many parameters to put with her. So I'm gonna see one more. Oh, that's not good. Okay, let's see. Find games with Evan's name. If there's more. I'd be interested in here.
Wait, I don't see how I'm supposed to do this. I think that's an... STST 2015 4. Which one is. Oh, is that the inequality? Oh, jeez, that problem. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> I never really liked that one, to be honest. It's gotta be possible, right? I feel like there's not that many things I can do. What can I possibly. Canada. Yeah, look, one of the will work for that problem. Your other option is a form of smoothing. Where you like try to smooth one of the, the smallest variable to zero or something along those lines. Oh, that's not gonna use. Yeah, so the guy there is trying to. All the puzzles that are doing apparently have translations in some ancient language is the backstory. And so the guy's trying to translate them with varying amounts of success. Alright, this one, there's actually literally almost nothing. Oh, I lied. There's actually a second option. You can jump to that one from there.
there. Aha. Domino! Haha! There we go. Yeah, apparently, 4 or 5 is a pretty straightforward calculation, right, or something? Like, I think you just kinda run it over, if I remember. Okay, so a bunch of moving portals. Yada yada. I don't think you need to calc bash the APMO problem. I, I think it's not supposed to be that bad. Huh. Whatever it turns out to be, I, I'll be here, okay? Clover looks completely unamused. All right. Actually, that one's so high up I can't jump there. So I can toggle this some number of times. Issues. Another help. Ah!
anywhere. How does this work? Oh, now it works. Okay. I don't know what I messed up. Uh, okay. Why oh, have you got the full message? Yeah, the story is that the sister Dysis is dying and... Oh no, that guy... Defender? Detective? 
I haven't figured it out yet.
So that guy is Evan.
<laughs> if I never saw in a strange shrine when we were playing in the woods. It's nothing about so tell us something about a hidden island. Secret to eternal life. Hey stranger. Come here. Ask you a favor. So you find the island for me. What? There's more puzzles? Uh... Wait, do I just have to go through? Wait, I'm supposed to replay everything? chat enabled on your discord uh... I guess whenever people use it there's no like to redo all the levels. <laughs> Actually, this is not what I'm supposed to do, right? I should...
Yeah. This is literally like the same set of puzzles, right? That we did at the very start. I get to use the skip puzzle button. Uh, okay, no, no. Maybe it will not make me redo literally every puzzle. I heard the news. Which news are you referring to? <laughs> This is the backstory of how they... <laughs> the most brilliant and promising mind the world has ever known. Bells. 
スといえば心を踏みにそのレベンタクシーマスチェンジモノリフトのピーローです。まさかのオプセットのリフトです。
Clover is there. You go back to Clover's house with the notebook in your hands. You tell him Clover is real. Clover is real. Oh my god. <laughs> Holy shit. Clover arrived first. So the sister's going back to good life. Last cutie, of course. The most twisted thing I've ever heard. Yeah, that sounds about right. I remember is doing that whole act in front of Clover. What the heck? The actual hack. <laughs> Thank you. 
Nehmen wir das. Ja, ist doch heiß. Vielleicht hier hin. Dazu will ich. Oh. Oh my god, the water. Wait, this is the most twist. This, this, hey. Wow. This is like TV. <laughs> no, it makes sense. It's. So it's asking questions so we never reach the end. Oh, I, I think. Wow. That, that was so fun. Dices is a random group, just any, it's like any random person with name Dices.
post credits. In this small town, yes, I don't know. Oh no, wait, how do you do this puzzle? Uh... Crap. So I need to... Ah, freak! I'm so bad at this. Okay, yeah, that's post credit scene. Happy. 
Okay, now we're done. I broke Wolfram. Losing. Uh, all right. Is it still worth playing the game? I think so. Yeah, it's not very long. It's it's kind of short game. Um. All right. I'm doing this like stupid. <laughs> it's in Soria Manor Man, Old Garden. Okay. This thing that is tricky. Alright, what should we do now? Evan, do you play chess? Not especially. I know how the pieces move and that's about it. I'm missing some achievements from the game. I wonder what I missed.
Do we end up doing Shar again? No. Do you want to do an inic? I don't know. I was expecting the rest of Evan's remains to take a little longer or something. I didn't. I thought there was. I knew I was like almost done, but I didn't realize there was like. I think there were like maybe like four ish puzzles. What I was supposed to do. Okay. So is everyone taking from requests? I'm basically trying to decide whether I should just adjourn or try to squeeze something else in. Ooh. You're tired just to adjourn. All right, we can adjourn for the night. <sighs> okay. Oh yeah, good luck on Inmo to... Good luck on Inmo. Also, good luck on Amy for those of you taking that. Uh. <laughs> What is percentage of inic is computational fortitude? <laughs> Depends on how good your computational fortitude is. <sighs> yeah, it's been kind of a long day for me. Uh, I was almost thinking about canceling the stream because around like 4 p.m. I felt like I was going to collapse. Uh, I felt slightly better since then. But yeah, so Amy is next week. Um, Okay, see you all. Good luck.